Adam's in the house. Hallelujah! Woo! All right. Praise the Lord. God's still looking for Daniel. Yes, he is. He's yeah. looking for Josiah. He's looking for Samuel. Powerful stuff. Y'all be sure to share, share, share as soon as you get on, on, on. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe over there. We are on. Life, I believe we're about there tonight. Just an honor to be coming back before you here on Facebook Live. Have a few that join with us here. Here tonight, we're trying to stay in the boundaries uh, of that. But I did make that statement. But I understand maybe in a couple of weeks, there, but they're going to, be, uh, going to be opening back up there. So we're thankful for that. The good Lord's going to help us. And you know, all this year there, uh, this one is saying that, and I want to say this about all the things that are going on. I'm just going to keep on trusting the Lord. Anybody with me? I'm just going to keep looking to Jesus. Anybody believe he's the author and finisher of our faith? We want to look to the Lord and go to the Lord in prayer. The Lord would grace us in this place and on okay, there where you at joining in with us. And we're just praying that God would touch you. Believe the Lord has given us a direction and a word for several weeks that we want to indulge in from the little book of James. There's about five there. I don't know what I'll even be able to finish what I'm doing as far as tonight. The first five verses of the book of James, laying a, uh, of Jude, they're laying a foundation. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege, Lord, that we have to be able to come again, Lord God, before, Lord, these that are here tonight, and those, Lord, that will join us there on Facebook Live. Lord, we know that our churches haven't been opened up as yet, but, Lord, we believe, Lord, that they're going to be very soon. And some haven't even closed as of yet. We're thankful, dear God. Believe that, God, you're going to work all these things out. And those who are coming against us to try to stop us, we know, Lord God, that you are working in the midst. And many more souls are going to be saved and added into the kingdom of God. Touch us tonight, Lord, we pray. We will be hid, Lord, behind the cross. And all will be done and accomplished. We'll give you praise and honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know this old song, I'm glad he lifted me out. We have uh, several here with us tonight. We want you to uh, join with us and help me to sing this good old song. Anybody glad he lifted you, lifted you out? Let's sing it together. I know y'all can sing better by standing over there here with me. <laughs> I'll never forget that day when I heard the dear say. Say, I'll take all your fears away, your troubles and doubts. My feet were all sinking sand, and I knew that I could not stand. Then I felt his precious hand as he lifted me out. He lifted me out of the deep miry clay. He planted my feet on the heavenly way. And I'll tell it wherever I go for a moment the whole world to know. I'm glad that he loved me. That he lifted me out. I traveled on sin's broad road, far away from the blessed abode. I'm bent beneath my heavy load, but now I can shout. For Jesus the Savior came when I called on his prayer. Just name, he took all my sin and shame, and he lifted me out. <coughs> he lifted me out of the deep mountain clay, and he planted my feet on the hill. the whole world to 
that way of sin. You draw, let him be your staff and rod and turn you about. From sin he will set you free and the pathway of life you'll see then just as he did for me he will lift you right out oh he lifted me out of the deep mountain clay and he planted my feet on the Praise the Lord. 
We want to go again to the Lord in prayer before we go into the Word tonight, asking that the Lord would just minister to you to touch, to touch you and those who are uh, still in their homes. Uh, there, there's some that's had still be in quarantine because of being in contact with this one or that one, etc. But we believe that there's a God in the heaven that's going to work all this for His glory, the building of His kingdom. And there's going to be lives that are going to be changed. And that's what we're thankful for. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Fathers, we come before you tonight. We want to thank you for the privilege, Lord, that we have, Lord, to be gathered into the house of God. Just asking your dear God to minister, Lord, we pray to each and every one, Lord, if it's here tonight, we just thank you and praise your wonderful name. Asking your Lord Jesus to touch, Lord, we pray. Minister the Lord to every need, every request that was given in. I'll just praise you, Lord, and thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, just ask you, dear God, to touch the Lord, we pray. Ryan Yates, others, dear God, those who are going to be in quarantine because, Lord, of this virus. And, Lord, quite it is done. Oh, mighty God, but I believe, Lord, when your people gather back into your house, they're coming back, Lord, to worship you in spirit and truth. Lives are going to be changed. Young people are going to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, tasting the good word of God, the powers of the world to come. I'm asking, oh, God, that you would, Lord, give us revival. Lord, among our youth, among, Lord, Jesus, our uh, Lord, uh, our young, all of our young adults and older ones, God, uh, just give us an old-fashioned Holy Ghost and give it never case and Holy Ghost revival. Lord, we're going to give you praise and honor for the things that would be accomplished in this service tonight, and we'll give you praise for it all in Christ's wonderful, precious, holy name. Amen, amen. Brother Jesse, come and take the, there's a, a few here with us tonight, take the offering there. If anybody's got it, I won't have this sticking in my pocket. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're just so glad to be with you uh, here. We're looking forward to the time where we can reopen completely. And there I did make the statement there and uh, uh, Sunday and uh, there that uh, we wasn't going to turn anybody away that, that come. Now, I'm not out trying to, you know, to be some kind of rebel or all, but I believe people need Jesus now, don't you? I believe people need hope today. There are people committing suicide. They don't know where, where to turn it. I can tell you there's one today. Oh, hallelujah. He'll give life to those. He'll give them hope. He's the God of hope. They'll just look to him and trust him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I just feel like singing this little chorus. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. He's all I need. He's all I need. Everything. I have everything I 
happening to make me happy to show me the way. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like for you to turn with me to the little book of Jude. It's only about 26 or 7 verses of Scripture, but Jude is power packed. And it's a very needful word that uh, there, I believe, needs to come before the church. How many of you believe that the church is in need of revival? Amen. I believe the church is in great need of revival. And this year, I believe here we'll yet take heed to what this little book is saying that uh, uh, here, when we come back, we, we, we will, we will have revival. Amen. What a powerful little book that this book Jude is. Jude, there, only one chapter, and I, there, how many verses is that in the, uh, uh, in the book of Jude here? Let me see. I believe there's 20, 20, 25. I thought that's what it was. Jude here. 25. But that's interesting. Why? Do well, I know what 25 in Bible you merits me? You won't forget it. 25 means forgiveness of sin. Wow. Mm -hmm. So if you take heed to what Jude is saying and repent there if, if, if any of these sins would be would be uh, there in your life, uh, their revival will sure come to your life. Let's look at this together. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. I love that. Servant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of folks today, there's a lot of folks today instead of coming and uh -huh. here serving, uh -huh. they want to be served. Uh -huh. But God needs some servants today who are willing to serve and be accounted for Christ. And brother of James, to them that are sanctified. That's an ugly word for a lot of folks in church world. <laughs> yeah. They don't want nothing to do with sanctification. Nope. But to them that are sanctified. Evidently there were some in that church that were sanctified. He writing to them by God. Now, I've, I've been in school there and they talk about being persistently sanctified. I understand that. Because they really there, Christ there with, with, with his blood. When he sanctifies you there, when you are saved, you're, you're sanctified. Amen. But then there's got to be practical sanctification. There's a practicing part. There's some things you and I have got to do. Yes. Amen. If I'm going to help you tonight. Yes. So he says here, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved, that here means, you know, for us to be kept in Christ Jesus and called mercy unto you and peace and love. Be multiplied. I love that. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the mercy of God, for the peace of God, and for the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody remember where he reached down his love? And lavished you with his love. What a love. What a love God had for us. Be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. The Holy Ghost prompted him and moved him in another direction. So we've seen that happen there. Sometimes there, a preacher, sometimes we come to the pulpit and God just gives us and puts us in another direction. Somebody help me here. So that's what the Holy Ghost is doing here to do. He said here and exhort you that you should earnestly contend. That word there means defend or fight a fight. For they which was once delivered unto the saints, literally once for all. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men. I don't want, no, I don't want you to get a hold of this. This is important for us to get a hold of. Because we're living in that day right now when they would turn the grace of our God unto less citizens. That's important for us to see. And deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, and then notice here he gives a warning of what happened to those who've done likewise. When God puts that there, it's there as important. In other words, it's happened in the past. 
And God is saying here, if you follow down that path, this is exactly what will happen to you. So this is given to us for our learning, for our admonition, for our example. And he said, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Destroyed them. Now they come out, they were saved. So all those who believe in that once saved, always doctrine, you need to look at verse 5. Not given it to us just there. He didn't just put it in there to make us, you know, well, you know, to take it or, you know, no, you better, you better heed what he said. If you intend on getting into God's holy heaven, we need to take heed to what he said. I'm going to talk about tonight, I began to, to take me about five weeks on this, so we'll be coming back parts in here when I finish on this here, but I feel a urgency to deal with this in the times that we're dealing or we're in on the fight for the faith. And I'm saying that because there's so much deception going on. Oh, yes. Deception is everywhere. Jesus said it would come. He said, Preacher, we need to, well, I want people to understand there. Before I get a man saved, he's got to first of all get lost. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of folks, and this is the sad part before I pray. There's a lot of folks in the church there that have convinced themselves that they're saved and they're doing exactly what Jesus said they would do. And that's the sad reality. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight for the privilege that I have to be gathered into the house of God. I'm asking you, Lord, to touch your servant tonight. Help me, enable me, dear God, to preach your Lord unadulterated word. I, I can't do nothing without you. I am completely, totally dependent upon you. Holy Ghost, I need you tonight. I come before those that will be watching live, those who are too, Lord, watch later. Lord, I know, dear God, this is not a popular message. This is not a message, Lord, that people want to hear today. They don't want to understand the times that we're living in. They convince themselves that they are saved and they're on and they're going to go into heaven. And Lord, they've got a profession, but they don't have a possession. Lord, they don't have a hunger to read your word. They don't have a hunger to pray. Almighty God, that relationship is grown cold and it's desperate, Lord, with you. But I'm asking, oh God, that you'll have mercy upon that lukewarm, that cold, that indifferent, that one that's callous, that one that's become hard-hearted to your word. I'm asking you, Lord, to touch them in a special way and help me, oh God, to say no more, no less that you would have me to say as you hide me behind the cross. They do not see me tonight, but they see you. Almighty oh, God, oh, touch thy servant tonight. I'm completely dependent upon you. Holy Ghost, I need you. Brother, be home to men, sing without your anointing. Yes. Lord, and I'll give you praise for it in Christ's name. And everybody say it. Amen, amen and amen. Yes. Throughout church history, I want that to sort of sink in tonight, throughout church history. There have been scoffers there in our day, mockers and doubters. These are those who hold a low view of Scripture. I want to ask you tonight, what is your view on the Scripture? There's a lot of folks tonight, they believe that there are errors all through this Bible. Errors. That really, uh, they, they believe some of it's true, but not all of it. But I would ask you the question tonight, if you, if, okay, what makes what you believe in here to be true, and what you don't believe not to be true? You can't answer that question. That puts you as God. But I believe that the Word of God, uh, that this is, does not contain the Word, but this is the Word of God. They tried in every conceivable way possible to discredit, to even to minimize the Word of God, the goodness of God, as an unreliable and an untrustworthy message. For humanity's existence that makes mankind accountable to God our Creator. They, in other words, there, they, the reason why that people today want to discredit the Word is simply because for them to do their meanness. 
The reason why they say the reason they're believing in evolution today is simply because they they don't believe they're accountable to God. But I don't I want you to understand. You can believe in that mess if you want to. You can believe that you come from some tadpole or from some monkey, and eventually the tail fell off. Oh, come on, somebody else. Night. Oh, that they may be your ancestor, but they're not mine. I was wonderfully, gloriously, marvelously made in the image and likeness of God, and I am accountable to God Almighty and will one day stand before God and give an account unto Him. So if we look, these human humanistic folks say the word of God is too narrow-minded to solve the issues in society. This is exactly what's going on today. These humanistic views like today in the New Age movement had crept in unaware in Jews' day. And so today, one of the greatest philosophical threats to biblic biblically here based Christianity is secular humanism. So this, really, this has been for years now the underlying philosophy. It's been ex accepting religion in secular education. This is what literally this generation has been raised up on for the past 30, at least 30 to 40 years. And they've taught our children this kind of stuff. And government and society in general. And it is, is the established viewpoint of most of the news and entertainment media. There, Donald Sapps says, throughout the world. What is it that they teach? Now, I'm laying a foundation before I get into what Jude is talking about. They teach that humanity, the universe, and all that exists consists only of matter and energy shaped into their present form by impersonal chance. In other words, everything is here by chance. Well, I want to tell you, I read in the Bible that there was a creator that said, let there be light, and there was light. I read in the Bible there where God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So they can believe whatever they want to. But I believe I've been wonderfully glorious. The fathers were made in the likeness of the image of God Almighty. And one day I'm going to stand in his presence and I want to hear him say, well done, you fought a good fight, you kept the faith, his torn is laid up for you, a crown of righteousness and faith is not away. It's going to be worth every fight that you fight to keep the faith in this hour in which we're living in. Another thing that they believe that humans have not been created by a personal God, but by the product of some of a chance process of evolution. They also reject the belief of a personal, infinite God and denies the Bible of being the inspired revelation of God to the human race. A fourth thing is they assert that knowledge does not exist apart from human discovery. In other words, it's got to be discovered. In other words, it wasn't long ago. I remember a few years back, I read in prophecy uh, news there when J.R. Church was living uh, about that they had found the God particle. There was some little something other out there, and they believed that that's what it was, that it eventually come together, and all of this like a big bang, and it come together. Well, I want to tell you, if that's what it was, there's a God in heaven who put the particle out there, and he said, let it be, and there it was. Oh, my, my faith. I understand my faith that the worlds were framed. Oh, my, my, my. I need somebody to help me here tonight. Oh, they'll do everything that they can to discredit God Almighty when they don't realize that he just gave them the breath that they just breathed. So they assert this, and they say here, uh, there that human reason determines the appropriate ethics. Appropriate ethics of society, making human beings the ultimate authority concerning moral choice. That's the reason why we are morally bankrupt in America. It seeks to modify or improve, improve human behavior through education. This is exactly what they're doing right now. And they're doing it. This is the reason why your economy shut down. I'm con fully convinced of this because the Pope is behind it also. Redistribution of wealth. Modern psychology or human wisdom. 
They want to make that somehow or another. If we can educate man enough, if we can give him up some money there, he can bring him up out of the state that he's in. But what they don't know is that there's something within man that he's got a desperately wicked heart. He's got a sinful heart that needs to be regenerated and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. He needs to go to the fountain and still open. It's from a man that was saying, I'll be washed in the blood and be cleansed. It doesn't matter how far down a person has gone. There's an arm long enough to bring him up out. There's an arm long enough. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. And for all of those who want to do away with the blood, it was the blood that brought me back into relationship with Jesus Christ. And I can have fellowship with him again. I can walk in the tomb of the day and I can commune with him. Yes, amen. So we see here the sad reality is they don't believe like you and me as true Christians. I want, to, I want, I want another thing here. I don't want to go too fast. They also teach that moral standards are not absolute. But well, in other words, determine what, what makes people happy. What brings them pleasure or seems good for society according to the goals set by its leaders? They tell you what's good and accepted. While biblical values and morality are rejected. This is now in, mo in most quarters, socially and politically. People of the same mind, they're working to produce a unified world or a united world, the one world order. Listen carefully. Socially, economically, religiously, and politically. It's all coming together. Oh, that woman is about to get on down on the beast, but he can't get or she can't get on there until the blood bought pong, blood bought pong is taken out of this world. I've been washed in the blood. God's got a little of the people that he's going to take out of this world if they'll keep on fighting the fight. But you're in a fight. Don't give in, give out, give up, but keep on fighting. This good fight of faith is a war, it's a battle, but it's one that's winnable. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. You can overcome this world by keeping on trusting Christ and fighting this battle. So as we look here, if you'll notice something, sad reality, that they don't believe like you and me, that God, so you see here, they think that they're the ones. Here's what's going on. Now, I, won't, I don't want to get too fast tonight, but here's what literally is going on. There are those elite, they believe in order to save this planet, that they are the ones that are going to have, they've got to bring everything together. And I'm telling you why that they believe that. Listen to me carefully. They see what the church does not see. Now let that sink in. The Bible said the children of darkness are wiser in their generation than the children of light. They understand that our resources are being depleted. But why are they being depleted? I can tell you why they're being depleted. It's because of man and sin. The God who created this world in her own night and hung the stars out on the for the desert. He sat there with through Paul. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. You say, why in the world are countries in such a shape that they're in a third world country? I can tell you why some of them are. Most, a lot of them have rejected the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's through the gospel that God brings me enough out of the poverty state and he blesses them. Oh my God wants to do it again. The reason we're in trouble is because man has forgotten God. So I look at this here. They're blinded to their sin. They don't see that God will supply me. But they're blinded to their sin. Well, what about if everything that gets off the shelf? Oh, my, my, my. Can I tell you, God's got an Ahab somewhere where a raven can go and get food from the table and bring it to his servant. Woo! Hallelujah. God can still rain manna down from heaven. He did for 40 years. So I'm going to keep on fighting this faith. I'm fighting this fight of faith. I'm going to lay hold on eternal life like Paul told Timothy. Because I believe that in the end, I'm going to be the winner and they're going to be the loser. Somebody both cannot win. They believe they're going to win. Their God is the God of this world. But my God is the God. 
who wrote the stars I own nothing and he knows my name he knows how many hairs are numbered upon my head and he calls me by name yeah. he knows my name yeah. so I plan on fighting him till he ends yeah. <laughs> can only help me to yeah. they're blinded they're blinded to their sin to the need for God they can't see that the cause for the lack of rain or too much rain or wildfires and diseases and pestilence that come are all because of man's sin and refusal to come to God and be saved. But God in his mercy allows these things to come so that we can stop and we can think again and we can look up, you know something other, I believe I need this God. Oh, my body, he lets Christ come to our way so that we can see our need for God. So, if you'll notice, Jude intended on writing here of our common salvation. In other words, our completeness in Christ, that we may complete in Him, in everything. How many of you believe He's got a table spread for us? Right. And He says, Come and die. He's got bread and fish on the fire. Bread there for the hungry. He's got fish. He's got meat to make us strong. He's got bread there for the weary soul. He's got milk for those to make us strong. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. And Jude here says, but all of a sudden there, he's going to tell us about our completeness in Christ. But all of a sudden he felt moved by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost, to write this hard-hitting epistle. It's a powerful epistle. That was against these blatant, that means contempt, contemptuous, false teachers. Now listen at me carefully. Who taught that salvation by grace allowed them to sin without condemnation. False teachers who taught that salvation by grace allowed them to sin without any condemnation. That means without guilt or penalty, and denied the original apostolic revelation about the person and nature of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, Jesus was a man, but he was not just a man. He was fully God. He was so much man that he slept on the boat, but he was so much God that he stood up and said, peace be still. He was so much man that he wept in the tomb, but he was so much God that he said, Lazarus, Come forth from the dead. Amen. Woo! Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my, my, my. He is Jesus Christ, the Son of Man and the Son of God. So this corrupt doctrine had found acceptance in the church by those who had crept in unaware. They had settled in alongside the saints. So why is it so needful, some might would ask, was because it was dividing the church on what to believe. There are a lot of folks today, they don't know what they believe. They don't have a worldview from this Bible. They're listening to every talk they can have that comes along that don't know what they're talking about. Let me say something to you. I don't Everything, but I know this book has everything that I need and I believe it as a black fella said from Kimber to Kimber. God said it and that forever settled down in the heaven. And not one chop or one pill will pass away until all be fulfilled. And so they had crept in. And Paul and Jude here in verse 19 there were showing. They didn't know what they believed and how to behave. Verse 4, verse 8, verse 16, we'll get along there, we'll get with them. So then, to bring sanity here, that means soundness of judgment back here to the church, the Holy Ghost moved upon you to expose this dead in the section that it had been, in other words, uh, there, uh, unless it had been exposed, it would have destroyed the spiritual life of the church. Let me say something to you. I, I, listen, 
I say this with all the love that I know how. The reason why in many churches the power of God is not being manifested is because they pushed him out the door and he's standing outside knocking to re enter in. God is not, listen, let me say to you, with love, First Corinthians there said, he, he's not going to have fellowship while you're sitting at the devil's table and sitting there dining in the day with the devil. You can't have fellowship with the, with the demons and devils and then come and expect to have fellowship for God on Sunday. But if you'll get rid of the idols in behind the Lord and you'll enter into God's house and you'll come to worship Him in spirit and in truth, I come out of tell you, the glory of the Lord will fill the house of death and God will manifest Himself in power and authority. God will sanctify. God will fill with the Holy Ghost if we will but trust Him in His Word. God means what He said. And you got to fight. It's a fight to me. This is what Jude is talking about. It was destroying the life of the church. And so I want to say to you in many of the churches, it destroyed the life. You're just going through the motion. You've got your life. You've got your black seamen. You've got your lights there. Who are you getting up there? You're jumping up and down. But I want to say something to you. What are you jumping up and down for? We do have something to jump. The joy of the Lord is our strength. But I'm telling you, if you're still having a, a fellowship at the devil's table and still coming in and having fellowship with the Lord, I'm telling you, he's not in the midst. You're just going through the motion and you are deceived. That's exactly right. So consider something with you. Many of our churches, and nobody wants to say anything about it today. The day would come, Jesus said they would put you out of church. They'd put you out of the synagogue, thinking they were doing God's service. But I believe that something else is happening. God has finally intervened. And God said, enough is enough. I'm going to be worshiped. I believe it's like Jeremiah. I'm not tired of you, of you bringing your sacrifice in, but it's, it's not holy. It's not of a first year. It's not without blemish, but it's stabbing. It's a broken leg. I'm telling you, my God deserves the best that I've got to, to worship Him in spirit. I need mean, proof. I need mean, holiness. And let the righteous holy God be exalted in the land of knowledge of the Lord on the earth and he will come back and righteousness will be on the oh, holiness will be on the pots and the pans and be on the horse's bridle. What a glorious day that's going to be. I don't want to miss it Brother Clay. I don't want to miss something. Coming down to the end after 49 years, you said preacher you got it made. No, no, no. I'm fighting just as much as I've ever fought before but in the midst of the fight I found out there's a God strong enough with an arm long enough to keep me as a savior in the midst of a fight. You can make it. You can be an overcomer if you'll fight. This good fight. But don't give in to the deception of our day. I don't know where I'm going to even get on point one now. So Jude's going to bring some sanity back. I pray when we come back in our church, they'll turn the lights back on. Well, I want to turn the lights off. Just have a few lights and that's so they'll feel free to worship. If you're not ashamed to worship the Lord, he said, if you're ashamed of me before this weekend in the daughter's generation, I'll be ashamed of you before my heavenly Father. Oh, mighty God. I'm God. Who help me here? Praise God. My God is not a God of the darkness. He's a God of the light. There's going to be light in that city. And for the clay was saying, there will be no light in that city. The Lamb of God is the light of that city. And where is that? There won't be no cockroaches. Oh, come on, help me. Won't be none of that stuff coming on. The cause in every canvas and corner is going to be holiness to our God. Because we fought that fight. And there will be later for us. There's going to be a magic over there for us. Hold on. It won't be long. Jesus will come and take his time. I want to deal with the first thing here. And I may not get much further than this. The first thing here, there's three, there's about four things that I wanted to deal with tonight. First of all, the danger of apostasy. Look at verse four. For there are certain men crept in unaware. That means unknown. They come in with, in like, you know, a lamb. But even if I, Paul said they'd be like a raven, wolves. 
You know, I can tell. Come on, somebody better help me. I can tell if a person got a uh, sanctified or not. And we're supposed to be sanctified. He said, well, I'll just lay my sanctification down. Well, be careful when you lay it down. You may not get it back up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just lay it down. I give him a piece of my mind. Oh, no. I pray in the morning, Lord, let this tongue be bridled. Oh, my. Let my words be seasoned with salt. Oh, my, my. You know, I even have to go to my wife every once in a while. I say, honey, I'm sorry. Come on, help me. Anybody here in here had to say you yeah, had to go back and say I'm sorry? You know, how many of you know this? Well, you know, we still kind of like that child here. Well, I'll go good, but I'm sorry. Oh, you won't be sorry. Oh, my. But you know how sorry we're supposed to be. We're supposed to give others, brother. And we're supposed to forgive others like Christ has forgiven us. We were way down in the heart of a pit. And Christ, he lifted us out. He carried us in. somewhere and was singing there and, and there uh, got to moving in the service and they were ones that handled rattlesnakes. And so they went over there and they picked those rattlesnakes up out of that box and they got to dancing all there in front of them and he said one of them come by there and he said I'm sure it was six foot long. <laughs> he said it was long. And there and when he come by and I said oh look looked like one of them was about to kill him. And he looked around at his wife and there uh, asked him, his wife said if you hey, He's the back door anywhere. She said, I look and I can't find anyone. Can't find one. Me and that, uh, uh, he, uh, when the back will turn up, look down, he said, Reckon where they want one at. <laughs> oh, they slide in and just slide down on in. It's like that. These apostates came in, not by the way of the cross. Let me say something to you. Well, hold on, doesn't I know how? If you haven't knelt at the foot of the cross and you haven't seen a wounded, bleeding, dying Savior who died for you, who pulled a crown of thorns on his head and nails in his hand and in his feet and a side that was pierced. If you have a knelt the cross where you should have been crucified and seen somebody that loved you better than mom and dad, I'm telling you, you need to kneel at the cross. This is what was happening. They turned the cross aside. They wanted no part of it. Where they could see the severity of their sin. What just one sin brought to the whole human race. Look what happened when Eve partook of that. Because in verse 19, he said, Having not the Spirit. In Ephesians 2 and 11, Paul said, Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. That means to expose them. Some would say, Why is it necessary to expose such, such this danger here? Because you see, apostasy is deadly. And if the warnings are not heeded, they have tragic consequences. I believe that God tried to wake America up in 2001 with 9 11. And there, uh, David Wilkerson said, The powers have fallen, but we have missed the message. Yeah. And America just went on in their sin. Yeah. And this is what their arrogance they said. How much longer is God going to let it go on? They're arrogant, they said, we're going to be a bigger and better. Sounds like the rich man said, who will? He said, well, what am I going to do with my good? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tear my barns down and bigger, build bigger barns, and I'll say to my soul, have your ease and dine. And God said to him, you fool, that not I require you your soul. Our soul belongs unto God. This body belongs unto him. I've been bought with a price, and that's what I'm going to do. God, in my spirit and in my body, it belongs unto Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So what it says here, if you recall the captain, listen here, why this warning? Because apostasy is dead. And if we're not heeding the tragic warnings, listen carefully to what I'm about to say. How many of you recall 
the captain aboard the Titanic was given a radio warning of an iceberg ahead. But he bought into the lie that this ship was unsinkable. That's what they said. This ship is unsinkable. Anything man makes is not unsinkable. It's not permanent. Amen. And so by, by ignoring the warning, more than 1,500 people died. Can I tell you there is only one ship that's unsinkable, and that's this old ship of Zion, and this old ship for about to sail. It's been battered by deception. It's been battered in every kind of direction. And come along lately, and they're doing everything they can to destroy it. Well, let me say something to you. There might be some boards flown by you, but if it comes from this old ship of Zion, get a hold of one of them. Listen to another one. You see, they're all for all those who are wanting to destroy the faith. Listen, we need we do well to listen from learn from history. We gotta learn from history. We're almost upon Rome. Rome corrupted from within and failed. Look at the going on between our lawmakers today. All this stuff that's going on is destructive. It kind of reminds me far as the Belshazzar in that drinking with his with his lords and they didn't know that outside of the camp that they were digging underneath and his days were numbered and weighed and found one. But here history towards December 7, 1941 I don't know where you've heard this from or not. Sergeant Joseph Lockhart reported to his superior supervising officer that a large flight of airplanes was approaching Hawaii on his radar screen. Lockhart was told not to worry. They were most likely friendly. friendly. Failure to see them as a threat cost the lives of over a thousand men who were unprepared when the Japanese aircraft bombed Pearl Harbor and we went into World War II. World War III is not far off. They are saying that America and China will go to war. I don't know. A rabbi has just said that. I read that the other night. I don't know what's coming, but I do know it's not going to be pretty in this world. But I do know for the bride of Christ and for those who are caught for life, there is laid up for us a crown of life. Oh, it won't be long and we'll be leaving here. of deception sown have come up and they produce the field of tares among the wheat. Apostates in our region in almost every denomination in our own denomination before I get to others 23.5% somewhere along there do not that were serving believe in the inheritance of scripture anymore that's almost 25% we can point our fingers at others, but it is also in the church of God. That's right. I believe that this is the infallible, irrefutable, indisputable, inerrant word of Almighty God. Does not contain it. It is the word. And Brother Jesse, it is forever settled in the heaven and an earth. The heaven and earth may pass away, but his word will never pass away. Listen carefully. Consider reading in an evangel, Dr. Tim Hill, in the evangel sometime back, of the secretary of a mission board of a great denomination said, listen to this carefully. We have given up all hope of saving this generation. This was a few years back, hope they changed their mind with coronavirus. Our efforts are now directed to the next. What about if they hate them? No more missionaries will be sent.
sent out to nearly evangelize our hope is in education. We're the most educated people that there is that I know of now. My mama had a third grade education. My dad had a sixth grade education. But my mama had some common sense. <laughs> and my mama, come on, somebody help me. My mama had neology. <laughs> She may not have had a lot of theology, but she had theology. And the Bible said, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. My mama said, when she got saved, she could have handled fire that night. She felt the power of God in the midst of me. Here's another one. But you know what the, the Bible said for us to preach? I'm going to do my best to preach. Another one in the prominent denomination said, I do not believe in the doctrine of sanctification by the blood. Oh, wow. Listen to what he said here. Thank God I'm not saved by the blood of anyone. Salvation by the blood of Christ is a gospel of the butcher shop. Wow. How did he get in the position that he's in? You want me to tell you how he how he's getting in the position they're in? It's because people are not being vetted today. They stand up and do not believe. God forgive, yes. I ain't what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about this is heresy. You cannot be saved without the word of Jesus Christ. Without the word of Almighty God. First Peter 1 and 23 being born again, not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible fire. The word of God. Romans 10 and 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. By the word of God. But I want to say, well, for him, it's so evidently, but for me, as Paul said in Romans chapter 3 and verse 3 and verse 4, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without a faith? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man alive. Another one said this those who recorded the virgin birth were doubtless being influenced by pagan fables. My, my Lord. Fables. They turn away their ears from the truth, Brother Jesse. And an apostate, this is what people don't understand. When you turn away your ears from the truth and become an apostate, you begin to believe what you one time believed was false and you no longer believe what you one time believed as true to be false. But I got for you. You fell for the devil's lie just like Eve when the devil said you shall not surely die. I come by to tell you the Bible said the soul that sin shall die. But the one that falls on his face before God and is saved and washed in the blood one day will be back in God's presence and dining at the table of the Lord. But you've got to fight have time to go into the other I wish that did. But I want you to look. Oh my. We have, if that is true, what he said is true. You and I are miserable, hopeless, helpless before the Holy God. Because God has revealed himself to be holy. Mm -hmm. In fact, the angels cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. In his presence, brother Clay, the sheriffs and the children, they cover their face. They cover their feet. Let that say something to this generation who wants to go naked. The sheriff in his presence, cherubim's covered in sin because of his holiness. I felt his presence in a mighty way. I, I, I wanted to finish. I just got into this. But there's a danger today of apostasy. I'll deal next week on the description of apostasy. 
then I'll be alone. Be alone. There, what we can do. There's another one that slipped my mind. What is that one? I'll get on next week. The destruction of apostasy. And then how the Lord can help us. God wants to help you. Yeah. God wants to help you. Yeah. Are you willing to fight? Are you going to give in to the to the government and all those man-made laws around here thinking they're going to help you? Thinking they're going to save you? I can tell you what they're about to do. No. It's not far off. They're going to come and get your gun. And all they won't get mine. Oh. You let another president get in here, you'll find out. Exactly. Oh, they won't close the churches. This is a dry run for what they're wanting to do. We better wake up. Yeah. Knowing the time. Yeah. Give you this last scripture. And I'm going to close. Romans 13 and 11. And knowing the time that it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Our hope, our hope is in Christ. Yeah. For these here who say that they won't be part of the blood religion, Brother Jesse, I say, oh, okay, you, that's your privilege. But for me, I'm glad to go to the fountain yeah, come on now. and never shall run dry come and on. say, oh, Lord. I say, search me, oh, Lord. Yeah. I beg you, beg you. We need to pray. Did we get any prayer requests tonight? Man? We got any, Brother Jesse, would you come? Those of you that have come, and we're not running over, so don't, don't go call the sheriff or whatever there or whatever, but if he does come, I'll ask him, does he want to have church with us too? <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm telling you, it's an urgent time. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my spirit. Let me give you some good news. The governor of Virginia, <laughs> he thought he had won, but the DOJ up there got his number. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes. He got his number. You know what? They had six tickets for this. It went in their favor. The church is favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The church is essential. It's more essential than the loans. More essential than Walmart. This is essential. People are dying without love. And they need a savior to set them free from sin. Yeah. 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 Be Jesus, Brother Jesse. Yes. Yes. Brother Jesse, read that for me. Continue. Uh, remember these prayer requests here. Um, remember Sister Dally Pollard, Sister Francis. Um, her youngest son passed away this past Sunday. Um, definitely want to continue to remember that family and the peace for that family. Um, continue to remember uh, Sister Vicki Rogers' brother who's lost. He's, he's in need of salvation. Um, also continue to remember uh, Sister Kim Shaw. Uh, God knows in need there. Uh, remember Sister. Uh, Deva Murphy, um, she has a severe headache for, and has had it for over a month. Um, remember uh, Brother Clay Milburn's friend Aaron, he's bound. Uh, continue to remember uh, April uh, Mazingo's cousin Angie, remember her for her salvation. Uh, remember Jacob Allen as well, he's been sick uh, with pneumonia in his lungs. Continue to remember him and his recovery. Uh, remember all of our shut-ins as well. Um, continue to remember uh, Sister Betty last year. She's been in the hospital and um, with her being in there and all of this, and she's going through a rough time. Continue to remember her and for her, her healing. Um, continue also to remember our young adults. We're praying uh, together as we're doing our, our Bible studies, and with every one of us, we're seeking the face of God. We want a deeper relationship with Him and a deeper uh, hunger for Him. Continue to remember us. Um, continue to also remember our church and, as well as our pastors. Yeah. Uh, they are in deep need of our prayers um, as well as their families. Um, continue to also remember our country and our president and, that, yeah. and for revival in this country and that uh, the, the people would return back to God. Yeah. Um, continue to just remember our lost loved ones and friends. Um, I know that each one of us, we have them. Uh, continue to remember them. I believe that with all my heart that God is a savior as well as he is the deliverer. Yeah. And he can set the captives free. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so continue to remember them. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Church, would you, those of you that have joined with us, yes, sister. Let's remember that. Yes. There were other.
us that you've done a call there and, and, and for God to minister. Let's pray together. Would you join us there in that living room where you at? Yeah. And let's join together where two or three agree. I'm encouraging you to agree with us in behalf of these. Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and pray for these, Lord. We pray for Sister Natalie Collins, Sister Lord Francis, and oh, God, that you will move, Lord, in her life, in that life, our youngest son that passed away Sunday in need, Lord, of comfort and strength, dear God, to know it. For Lord, for them that there's a God in heaven is going to be on resurrection day for those, Lord, soon that have died in Christ. We pray for Sister Dickie Roberts, brother, Roberts, brother, who is lost, needs salvation, God. They're across this country and our families, our sons and our daughters, and those who have gone astray, those who are away, those who are lukewarm. And we want to continue to remember all our loved ones and our friends. There, that are lost, God. They need you. I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, for Sister Kim Shallow. You know what this need is. Pray for her family. Those that are lost without you, I pray for them. I pray for Sister Deborah Murphy. You've called it's been bad in this headache for over a month. Lord, we're believing right now. 30. The Lord is the purity. The blood of Jesus. I believe the blood of that life. Right now. Jesus, I pray that the blood of Jesus Christ be applied, touch her life, touch my door ahead her, and be healing in her body. Oh God, touch her right now. Lord God, oh mighty God, I'm asking you to touch her, bring healing to her, for the clay filled and spread there. Lord, touch and move in his life. Lord, April will see this cousin angel need salvation. Pray that you would move into that life. Bring them in. Lord, we're thankful for these that have gotten saved. We're thankful for Kevin and the Lord surrender his life to you. Lord, our hearts rejoice tonight. And we believe in Lord Jesus for a much deeper experience in that life. To be sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, tasted the good word of God, to simply believe what you have said and take you at your word. Holding on to every promise and believe in Lord that the God who has come will do for him and for all of us, Lord God. Minister to Jacob Allen, who's been so sick, need healing in his body, touch him right now. And we pray for all of our shut-ins, dear God. Sister Betty Lassiter, we pray for Sister Jean Allen. We pray to you, God, for others that need your touch. And her dad in that nursing home, Ruth Jones. I pray for all of our elderly. Lord, I pray in the church and need healing in their body. And touch them and strengthen them, Lord, we pray. And in this time, as we gather, soon be able to gather back into your house. Lord, touch us, Lord, we pray. Keep us safe. Keep us safe from, Lord, this Lord of virus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, I'm looking to you. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, as you repeat. Lord, as you kept those plagues from the children of Israel. Lord, I pray that we'll be kept, Lord, from your people that you're about to take out of this world. Oh, mighty God, and those dear God that are not ready, they're in a little more state. I'm asking you, dear God, to help them, Lord Jesus. Lord, make them uncomfortable. Make them miserable, Lord, until they get their self where they ought to be with you. Lord, and I'm going to give you praise. We pray, dear God, for our young adults. Pray for our country, our president, Lord. Yes. I'm asking you, dear God, to touch them with faith. I pray that all of his enemies, dear God, Oh, mighty God, Lord Jesus, Lord, oh, mighty God, when their eyes will be open, Lord Jesus. Lord God, they're out to destroy this man, but Lord Jesus, Lord, there's a God in the heaven. Oh, mighty God, that's watching how we treat one another. You're watching how they're doing him, how they're treating him, and they're trying to put all this stuff on him, and they created this to try to bring this economy down. Lord God, but I believe, Lord, you're going to turn it around. They're going to be Lord Jesus. They're going to have to say that it was the God of heaven because you give power to get well. And I pray for every family that's lost their job. I pray for those who in the meat packing, Lord, that got coronavirus. And Lord Jesus, from the shells, Lord God, I pray that Americans will wake up and they'll see you, God. Almighty oh, God, how quickly, how quickly, Lord Jesus, that their world can be turned upside down. And Lord Jesus can go to the store and there's nothing there to buy. 
I pray they'll be open. Uh, their eyes will be open. Lord God, yeah. they'll have mercy upon our country one more time and upon the church. Lord, as we come back, Lord Jesus, we give you all the praise and the honor and glory for all that will be accomplished. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your people. I pray your blessings upon them in a mighty way. I pray for all of those that have made a start for you. Oh, God, that they'll go on. They'll go on. And they'll fall in love with your precious son, Jesus. Fall in love. Fall in love with Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. And I praise you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you there. Lord, our daughter Heather is to have surgery for all uh, to stretch her airway. She needs a miracle. Anybody in here believe that God's still a God? Yes, yes, yes. God's a God of miracles. My daughter loves to sing for Jesus. And if she just got on the, up there singing for us there at the church, there in Ashburn. And he, I, you know, all it is, it is nothing more than an attack of the devil. You know, the devil, he can hit him, but he can't stop. He can't stop God's work. As long as the church is still here, God's going to still work. That's right. God's going to still work. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you Sunday. And as I said, I won't turn nobody away. I ain't, you know, uh, uh, there from the door of the church if they come. Mm -hmm. If they come. Mm -hmm. We've got plenty of room to stretch out here. So if you feel shady, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. And you need to understand when you come, Things could happen, good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to trust him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trust the Lord. Yeah. What is faith? Faith is trust, is confidence, is reliance upon Christ. It's an assurance. Yeah. And it's a blessed assurance. Amen. I believe he'll keep us. Sister Theresa, I believe he'll keep us. Yes, he I believe he'll keep us. God bless you. Until next time. Amen. Amen.